If you ask most people to name the oldest life forms that ever lived on Earth, the first answer you'll probably get will be dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs are old. They thrived in the Mesozoic era. But today, we're going to go all the way back to the Paleozoic era, which began about 540 million years ago and ended about 250 million years ago. That means it lasted about 290 million years. The first period of the Paleozoic era, the Cambrian, began with the mass proliferation of living organisms with mineral skeletons. It was long thought that multicellular organisms also emerged at the same time. But a study of the Vendian Ediacaran fauna has shown that soft-bodied multicellular organisms lacking a mineral skeleton arose much earlier. The Vanias had been soft-bodied multicellular. Now, paleontologists believe that individual species with different skeletal elements may have appeared before the Paleozoic, but they were not widespread. What exactly inhabited our planet at that time is very curious. And this is what we will talk about. This is a Pabinia, an ancient soft-bodied vacuum cleaner. The creature lived in the seas of the Cambrian period and is strange even for archaeology. The creature vaguely resembled a shrimp or even a lobster with 15 segments on an elongated legless body. It is thought to have moved using undulating paddles on the sides of its body, but it is hard to tell whether this creature swam freely in the water or hopped along the sea floor. To make it even stranger, it also had five bulbous eye-like insects that were located on its head. But that's not all. There was then a long limb about a third of the length of its body that was right on top of its head with a claw or pincer on the end. It is likely that the creature grabbed food with the pincer and then returned it back to its mouth, which faced the back of its body. If this sounds scary, it really is because they are up to seven centimeters long and what is inside their bulging ed heads can only be guessed at. Race seven very light tattoo-shaped figures run amok Meg of water and soon they are deep in Anomalocaris. No, that's not a call for dragonfish. That was the name of the top predator of the Cambrian seas, a shrimp-like creature one centimeter long. This animal had a flat body with wavy lobes that propelled it through the water. It spotted prey with two periscope-like eyes and grabbed it with two sharp claws, which it used to shove the food into its square mouth. The mouth itself had no teeth as we know them today. Nature describes the opening as having tooth-like serrations. The quadrumouth had exceptional eyes, made up of 16,000 lenses, which is standard for the arthropods, insects and crustaceans, to which it is related, but not of such enormous size, trilobites. Trilobites were armored invertebrates that no longer exist on our planet, but were among the most common animals of their time. These arthropods had three lobed segments and very likely evolved before the Cambrian period, perhaps more than 600 million years ago. There are no animals comparable to them today, except maybe if you flip a horseshoe crab over and squint really hard. Or, better yet, a wood louse, but they wouldn't like it. Also, although all trilobites, like all modern shrimp, have a similar body type, their behavior was very different. Some, for example, simply ate plankton, while others scavenged and some actively hunted. Haluchigenia. Haluchigenia is regularly named the strangest animal known to science. And once you see this pencil-like worm with seven tentacles, and once you see this pencil-like worm with seven tentacles, with mouths and seven spines, 
You'll probably agree that Halucha Janaya could be seen in a Pink Floyd movie, Brinda Bellispis. In the early Devonian period, about 400 million years ago, there was a fish that was unlike any other. A fish that had eyes right on top of its head. In fact, its nostrils were where the eye sockets would have been. The fish also had a snout that was so elongated that it has been compared to a platypus. As a result, the mouth was pushed very far forward. The creature was a placoderm. Placoderms were early jawed fish that had a plate around their head and body. These fish were not related to or were very distantly related to modern bony fish. And although they are extinct today, they were very common in the Devonian period. It is thought that this fish was a bottom dweller that could look out for danger from above. And also because it appears to have had a pressure sensing system on its snout. This allowed the fish to find prey by probing into the sediment. Now Dunkleosteus was an ancient armored fish that would give anyone nightmares. The Cleveland Museum of Natural History, which houses the best preserved skeletons of this predatory armored fish, notes that it grew to 20 feet long and had self-sharpening bony protrusions that weren't fangs or teeth, but something far more terrifying. Basically, Picture a giant fish with a guillotine on the end, hoping it will be lenient with your misdeeds. Fossilized remains show that it ate sharks, rays, and even its own kind. Beyond that, there are details about this ancient monster that we don't usually get from the fossil record. For one, fossilized pigments show that Dunkel Osteus was likely dark on top and silvery underneath. Secondly, it may have been one of the first fish to have different sexes and be so different from each other than anything other than Acmonistian. Sharks as a group of animals are ancient and some of the earliest were very strange. Sharks first appeared around 450 million years ago during the late Ordovician period as cartilaginous fish. Fast forward 100 million years to the Carboniferous period and sharks began to take on the form we know today with some strange modifications. The exception is the half meter long Acmonistian. This shark, in place of its main dorsal fin, had a structure that looked like a shaving brush mounted on an anvil. The top of the structure had serrations which were also found on the shark's forehead. Since this dorsal structure was only found in males of the species, it is assumed that its purpose was related to mating an impressive display to other inhabitants, Mega Anorpsis. During the Carboniferous and Permian periods, about 350 million years ago, the environment was different from today's Earth. Oxygen levels on Earth were about 50% higher. This allowed mega insects to arrive, and there was no insect bigger than Mega Norpsis. It's basically a dragonfly, and based on its fossils, it looked like one you might find in your backyard today, although slightly larger at 15 centimeters, and about the weight of a crow. However, so you wouldn't be able to fly it. It likely fed on other insects in the air or hunted small amphibians from the ground. However, the insect has been the subject of controversy because, like modern dragonflies, the way oxygen diffuses through its body gives it an upper size limit. This has led to support for theories about higher oxygen levels during these time periods. Diplocolis. The Permian period was characterized by a wide variety of amphibian numbers and types, and some, like Diplocolis, were just plain weird. This species lived from the late Carboniferous to the early Permian, and according to vertebrate paleontology, it stood out from the crowd of other Mesozoic amphibians by having a boomerang-shaped head with eyes on top. It's likely that this meter-long creature hunted fish and other river fawn. The boomerang head also served another important purpose besides slinging at banks. It could have been used as an airfoil or, more literally, a hydrofoil. 
The creature could have moved through the water more efficiently. For example, if a Diplocolus was lying on the river bottom, it might spot a fish with eyes on top. It could then lift its head slightly, which would have created lift in the current in one swift motion. All the while, ambushed its prey from below. By the end of the Paleozoic, life had colonized the land and diversified. One of these strange land creatures was the Therapsid. Therapsids were a type of reptile that lived during the Permian and Mesozoic eras. They are the lineage of animals that gave rise to mammals. These animals were known to be one of the first groups to have a variety of teeth, incisors, canines, and other less common saw-like tools. They were also large, about the size of a small car, and weighed almost half a ton. Whether this creature was an herbivore or a carnivore is not yet known. Its cannons and sharp incisors suggest that it could hunt, but it also had a robust body shape that seemed ideal for digesting plants. It is possible that they were omnivores, indulging in a full diet. The strangest feature, however, is that his pretty face had a pattern of bony ridges or horn-like protrusions that seemed to shoot out in all directions. This is speculation, but these protrusions may have been used for defense, display, or dominance combat, such as headbutting. Oh, headbutting. So keep that in mind. Enos Trans Via. This was probably the leading hunter of the late Paleozoic era during the Permian period. This genus had several species, some of which grew to almost three meters in length, and they also sported quite large saber-like fangs. Unlike other transitional reptiles, it had longer legs that were positioned directly underneath the body. This allowed the reptile to move faster than a reptile with its limbs spread out could. This means that the creatures were active, energetic hunters and you won't be able to escape. It has been suggested that some Gorgonopsians, including Inostransvia, may have hunted in packs. If so, these animals may have been endothermic, warm-blooded, in which their temperature is regulated from within the body. Scutosaurus. Despite its names, Scutosaurus was not a dinosaur, nor was it a moped. Rather, it belonged to a class of animals known as parareptiles, being related to anapsid reptiles such as turtles. Scutosaurus was about the size of a hippopotamus and was covered in bony plates for protection. This was likely a strong defense against the saber-like teeth of the Gorgonops. This animal was also a herbivore. It had horned projections on and around its face. It is believed that these evolved not only for defense, but also for use in mating competitions for dominance. Demetrodon. Perhaps the most famous beast from the pre-dinosaur era and often confused with one of them is the Demetrodon. It was a fairly large predator from the Permian period reaching up to 10 feet in length. However, the most unique feature of this animal was the sail-like structure on its back. This was formed by elongated vertebral spines that were connected to each other by a membrane. It is generally thought that this sail acted as a form of thermoregulation, but it may have been used as a display to attract mates or to scare off predators or rivals. Demetrodons were synapsids, the group that mammals belong to. Synapsid, as a term, refers to the openings in the skull. Synapsids, including mammals, have one. Just like mammals, they also had different types of teeth. Canines, incisors, and regular teeth are a common feature among mammals. So, as unlikely as it may sound, there may be a little bit of a Demetrodon in you but only a little bit smaller, Charovipteryx. Although the Mesozoic era, made up of the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods, is considered the age of dinosaurs, dinosaurs didn't immediately dominate life after the mass extinction that ended the Paleozoic era. Dinosaurs probably first appeared in the late Triassic period. 
Millions of years passed at the very beginning of the Mesozoic before the dinosaurs. This led to the emergence of some strange creatures. And one of them is a flying reptile called Shadowvipteryx. Life on land from the Triassic tells us that this animal is known from a single skeleton that shows a 12-inch, 30-centimeter, long, reptile-like body. What made it most unique was that it had a membrane connecting the back of its body to its back legs. Marine life not only splashes onto land but also constantly becomes more complex in its native habitat. The cephalopods that reign supreme in the water column at the beginning of the Paleozoic are being pushed out by fish. Some cephalopods die out, but increasingly more complex species appear, ammonites appear, whose heyday will come in the next era, the Mesozoic. But so far, only arthropods, insects, rise into the air. For vertebrates, the air is still closed. They will master this environment only in the Triassic, the first period of the Mesozoic. And if you want to know how this happened, then write about it. And I will try to make a series of issues on this topic. And all these creatures, only those that could be found over such a long period, there is no doubt that there were many more of them than we can assume, perhaps thousands, but time erased them. The Paleozoic ends with a grand extinction at the end of the Permian period. This extinction surpassed all others in its scale, including the famous extinction of dinosaurs at the end of the Mesozoic. The causes of this catastrophic extinction, however, as well as other similar events, are not exactly known. The global and massive extinction indicate that it had some common and large-scale cause.